Good evening. Welcome to the St. Vincent Drama Club performance of Schoolhouse Rock Live Junior. Thank you to Amy Dumford and Peg Crandall for co-directing these very talented group of students that have been working for over three months. So we hope that you enjoy the show this evening. Please make sure that you silence your cell phones so that's not a distraction. And here's Father Dan. There are three reasons why tonight is going to be a blast. First reason, it's time travel. It's going back to the 70s. And those of us of a certain age who grew up in that golden era, you know what I mean. <laughs> Secondly, it's like meeting one of our favorite teachers who's very, very old but remains forever young, as young as a rerun. And thirdly, and most happily, in this play, the students become our teachers. They remind us of our civics lessons, what's most important, and they show us how much talent and joy can be put in little bodies. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end of our life. We thank you for all time. You, Lord Jesus, are also our divine teacher, our best instructor in what is important about this life and in the life to come. And finally, Lord Jesus, you have said, let the children come to me, don't hinder them, to these belong the kingdom. We ask that you would bless these students, bless all of our families, our whole parish, and bless this production that it may serve for your greater glory and our great delight. You who are Lord forever and ever, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let the play begin. Good morning. I'm teacher. Miss Miser. No, that's terrible. I don't know why I'm so nervous this morning. I mean... I mean, I have a degree. I love children. There's no reason why I wouldn't be a great teacher. Oh, they're gonna laugh at me. I hope they don't think I'm goofy. I'll be fine. They're only eight-year-olds. I remember what it was like to be an eight-year-old, I think. Those little monsters are going to eat me alive. I've got up early. I've got plenty of time. I'll just look over my lesson plans. Ugh! It's too early. I wish I could just go back to bed. I'm not a morning person. Maybe if I just watch a little TV, I'll be able to relax. I didn't know these schoolhouse rock things are back on. I guess I have a little time to watch. Ah! Hey, welcome to Schoolhouse Rock. Live! Live. Where this is a schoolhouse and you are rocking it. Who are you and what are you doing in my living room? Oh, where are you, Tina? Okay, that's enough TV for one morning. I'm going crazy. No, no, don't turn off the TV. Leave the TV on, please. You want the TV? Take the TV. The TV's yours. Just leave me alone. Relax. We're, just, we're, we're different parts of you. We're all the ideas in your head. And not just us, Tina. Do you realize how many ideas you have in your head? Just look around you. Oh 
I don't understand this. Don't you see? We're every person you've ever met. We're every place you've ever been. We're everything you've ever known. Feel better? No. Well, every person you can know And every place that you can go And anything that you can show You know their nouns A noun's a special kind of word It's any name you ever heard I find it quite interesting A noun's a person, place, or thing Oh, I took a train, took a train to another state The floor and the farm that I saw were really great then I saw some bandage chasing the train I was wishing I was back home again When I took a train, took a train to another state Well, every person you can know And any place that you can go And anything that you can show You know their nows You know their nows We went for a walk on the island, you know In the middle of summer it started to snow When I took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty Well, every person you can know And every place that you can go And anything that you can show You know their nouns You know their nouns Put it down in the drugstore machine. Put it down in the wrecking machine. Oh, you're going to stop playing if you know what I mean. I heard Chubby Checker you was doing the twist and the beetles and the monkeys and goes like this, yeah. I put it down in a drugstore wrecking machine. Well, every person you can know. And every place that you can go. Like a neighborhood. Or And anything that you can show like or a record machine you know their nouns a noun's a special kind of word it's any name you ever heard i find it quite interesting a noun's a person place or thing a noun is a person place or thing do 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 Okay, I usually enjoy good morning hallucination, but I gotta get ready to teach my first day of classes today. So I'd appreciate it if you'd all just scoot. Tina, we know today's your first day of teaching. That's why we're here. We're here to help you. Right, guys? Yeah. yeah. What would really help is if I could look over my lesson plans. It's gonna be tough enough already. It's not gonna be tough. Why, it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy as one... Two, three. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. It's a magic number. Somewhere in the veil of ancient history, you get three as a magic number. The past and the present and the future, faith and hope and charity, the heart and the brain and the body give you three as a magic number. A man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. That's a magic number. Three, six, nine, 
12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Now do that with me. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Now multiply backwards from 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 3 is 9. And 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 1. Well, what is it? 3. That's a magic number. A man, a woman, hello, baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. That's a magic number. That was the coolest song. How can you say that's the coolest song when we have so many more cool songs left to do? I don't know. It was just the first adjective that came to mind. What's an adjective? I know what an adjective is. It's a word used to describe things. Here, let us tell you a little something about them. Got home from camping last spring Saw people, places, and things We barely had arrived Friends asked us to describe The people, places, and every last thing So we unpacked our adjectives I unpacked frustrating first Reached in and found the word worst. Then I picked soggy and next I picked foggy and then I was ready to tell them my tale. Cause I'd unpack my adjectives. alone without care Then we ran into a bear He was a hairy bear He was a scary bear We beat a hasty retreat from his lair And described him with adjectives Next time you go on a trip Remember this little tip the minute you get back, they'll ask you this and that. You can describe people, places, and things. Simply unpack your adjectives. You can do it with adjectives. Tell them about it with adjectives. You can shout it with adjectives. Adjectives! Shout it out, Kirsty Backpack and Ashes Girl. Au revoir, my blue eyed, gregarious, friendly friend. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the idea here. I can teach grammar if I use a little imagination. Right. But I'm not just going to be teaching grammar. I also have to teach math and science, social studies. Aha, social studies. Okay, I think I understand your problem. And I believe I can help. 
Follow me. Take the box. Take it. Set it down. Then have a seat, please. What are we waiting for? And right on time, it's Bill. I'm just a bill, yes I'm only a bill And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill Well it's a long, long journey to the capital city It's a long, long way while I'm sitting in committee But I know that I'll be a law someday Now I hope and pray that I will But today I am still just a bill Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Yeah, and when I first started out, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they want a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, You're right, there ought to be a law. So he sat down, wrote me out, and, I, and introduced me to Congress. And I became a bill, and I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill, and I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be a law. How I hope and pray that they will, but today I am still just a bill. Listen to all those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah. And I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? die. Yeah, die in committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. What happens if they say yes? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote me on Capitol Hill, then, then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line With a lot of other bills for the president to sign And if he signs me, then I'll be a law How I hope and pray that he will But today I am still just a bill You mean, even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yeah, that's called a... Veto! The president... Veto. Me then. I go to back to the Senate, uh, to Congress, and the whole thing, and they vote on me again. But by that time, by that time, it's very unlikely that you'll become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? Hope and pray, hope and pray that they will. But today I'm still just a bill. He signed your bill. Now you're a law. Oh yeah. Give him the flowers. Excuse me, folks. May I have your attention, please? I have made a mistake. Again. I read the card wrong. Again. It's not actually Bill 25, who's the law? It's actually Bill 35. <laughs>
was one of my favorite ones. I've forgotten how much I learned on Saturday mornings between bowls of Cocoa Puffs. Don't forget, Tina, it was a schoolhouse rock song that helped us pass Mr. Van Ryan's constitution exam. That's right. A whole classroom full of people singing. Hey, do you know about the USA? Do you know about the government? Can you tell me about the Constitution? Hey, learn about the USA. of principles for keeping people free. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out, the things that we should be. And they put those principles down on a paper and called it the Constitution. And it's been helping us run our country ever since then. The first part of the Constitution is called the Preamble, and it tells what those Founding Fathers set out to do. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, Our people spelled it out. They wanted a land of liberty. But wait, how's the preamble go? I'm glad you asked. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare at hand, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And this time, everyone sing along. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. Bum, bum, bum. Provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare at hand. Secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. For the United States of America. You know, in all my years of serious training to be, become a teacher, they forgot one important thing. What? They did. What? <laughs> that learning should be fun. It should be like a game. You're right. And we have to keep our blood moving. Well, it's great news. <laughs> 
action. Come on to the circulation. Starts with your pop, what a great sensation. Come on to the circulation. Out through your arteries and through your veins. Heart pumps the blood, then it does it again. So come, come on, everybody get on, everybody. Circulation. Come on, everybody exercise your body for a circulation. Circulation, everybody form a circle now. Uh huh. Circulation, like your blood, just start moving around. Circulation, it's a function that's so aside. Put your feet fall asleep, then you're not circulating right. You got four heart parts to pump the blood. Blood up. Yeah, that's circulation. Left, right, bench, cool, left and right, HM. Yeah, they do it, they circulate. Pump blood through your lungs for oxygen. And then your arteries take it through to your body. And your veins move your blood back to be renewed. Circulation takes nutrition to your cells. And gets rid of carbon dioxide and waste as well. Circulation. It's a function that's so out of sight. Your hands are cold, then you're not it's circulating right. Boy, well, your blood's such a life giving potion. Like a river, it's always in motion. From your head to your toes, doing good as it goes. It's a big, red, beautiful ocean. Well, the great new craze out sweeping the nation. Come on, do circulation. Starts with your heart, what a great sensation. Come on, do circulation Out through your eyes and through your veins Your heart pumps the blood, then it does again Come on, everybody get it on, everybody Circulation Come on, everybody exercise your body For a circulation Circulation, everybody form a circle now Circulation, it's a function that's so outside 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 Yeah! Thank you! Thank you very much! Elvis has left the building. No, no. Elvis stays on stage. No, actually, Elvis has actually left the building. <laughs> Whoa. That was a really fun song. And? And it was very informative. But? But it wore me out of it. Or? Or? Hey, what's up with all these conjunctions? You, you tell, tell us, us, Tina. Tina. Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. I got an and button or they'll take you pretty far. And that's an additive like this and that. Then there's but. That's sort of the opposite, not this but that. And then there's or, O-R, when you have a choice like this or that. And but and or gets you pretty far. <laughs> Hooking up two box cars and making them run right. Milk and honey, bread and butter, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. Dirty but happy, digging and scratching, losing your shoe and a button or two. He's poor but honest, sad but true. Boo hoo 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 hoo. I'm hooking up two box cars when you say something like this choice. Either now or later, or no choice. Neither now nor ever. Hey, that's clever. Eat this so that, grow thin or fat, never ever would I do that, I don't want to be fat. I'm 
hooking up two box cars and making them function out of the frying pan and into the fire he comes to sandbags but the balloon wouldn't go any higher let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas you should always say thank you or at least say please I'm hooking up words and phrases and clauses and complex senses like In the morning, when I'm usually wide awake I love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake Where you often see a duck and a drake And I wonder as they walk by Just what they'd say if they could speak Although I know that's an absurd thought I'm hooking up words and phrases and clauses I'm gonna get you there if you're very careful I'm tying up words and phrases and clauses I'm gonna get you there that song, I'm ready to teach me some English. Good, Tina. Good. But you gotta remember, English wasn't the first language of many of your new students. That's right. I do have a lot of students from different countries and cultures. I'm going to be very important in their transition to America. That's right. But that's what's so exciting. You have as much to learn from them as they have to learn from you. That's one of the great things about growing up in America. My grandmother came from Russia, a satchel on her knee. My grandfather had his father's cap he brought from Italy. They'd heard about a country where life might let them win. They paid the fare to America, and there they melted in. Lovely Lady Liberty, with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. This great American melting pot, the great American melting pot. America was founded by the English, but also by the Spanish, Dutch, and French. The principle still sticks, our heritage is mixed, so any kid can be the president. You simply melt right in It doesn't matter what your skin It doesn't matter where you're from Or your religion You jump right in To the great American melting pot The great American melting pot Who was to red, white, and blue America was the new world and Europe was the old. America was the land of hope, for so the legend told. On steamboats by the millions, in search of honest pay, those 19th century immigrants sailed to reach the USA. Lovely Lady Liberty, 
with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. It's the Great American Melting Pot, the Great American Melting Pot. What good ingredients, liberty and immigrants. They brought their country's customs, their language and their ways. They filled the factories till Soil help build the USA. Go on and ask your grandma, hear what she has to tell. How great to be American and something else as well. Lovely Lady Liberty with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. The great American melting pot, the great American melting pot. You know, it wasn't as easy as you make it look creating America. Our country didn't always reach from sea to shining sea. You're right. We should have our share of growing pains. Ow, ow, ow! ow really? Watch where you're going. One thing you will discover when you get next to one another is everybody needs some elbow room. Elbow room. It's nice when you're kind of cozy, but not when you're tangled, no snowy oh. Everybody needs some elbow, needs a little elbow room. That's how it was in the early days of the USA. People kept coming to settle, though. The East was the only place there was to go. The president was Thomas Jefferson. He made a deal with Napoleon. How'd you like to sell a mile or two? Or three or a hundred or a thousand. And so in 1800, through the Louisiana the territory was sold to us. Without a fuss and gave us lots of elbow room. Oh, elbow room, elbow room. Got to, got to get in some elbow room. It's a west or bust. And God we trust, there's a new land out there. Lewis and Clark volunteered to go. Goodbye, good luck, wear your overcoat. They prepared for good times and for bad. And for bad, they hired. Saka Joia to be their guide. I led them all across the countryside. Reached the coast and found the most elbow room they've ever had. The way was open enough for folks with bravery. There were plenty of fights to win the land rights, but the West was meant to be it. They call it manifest destiny. The trappers, traders, and the peddlers. The politicians and the settlers They got there by any way they could Any way they could Go! The golden rush Trampled down the wilderness Railroads spread across from east to west Soon the rest was opened up for Opened up for good Now we jet from east to west Goodbye New York Hello LA But it took those early folks To open up the way now we got a lot of room to be growing from sea to shining sea. Yes, that we have got our elbow room, elbow room. But if there should ever come a time when we're crowded up together, I'm sure we'll find some elbow room up on the moon. Oh, elbow room, elbow room. Got to get in some elbow room. It's the moon or bust. God we trust, there's a new land. Do you think we'll ever colonize on the moon someday? I don't know. There's a whole universe of possibilities. And my students are the ones who are going to take us there. Wow. That's a great song. It reminds me of when I was a kid. 
I used to love riding on trains. Well, have you ever traveled by plane? Yes. Have you ever traveled by boat? Yes. Have you ever traveled by spaceship? I don't know anyone who's ever traveled in space. I know someone who has. They say our solar system is centered around the sun. Nine planets, large and small, parading by. But somewhere out in space, there's another shining face that you might see some nights up in the sky, waving high. Interplanet Janet, she's a galaxy girl. A solar system is from a future world. She travels like a rocket with her common stream. And there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. No, there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. She's been to the sun. It's a lot of fun. Hi, it's a hot spot. It's a gas. Hydrogen and helium in a big, bright, glowing mass. It's a star. Ooh it's a star. Ooh so Janet got an autograph. Oh. Mercury was near the sun, so Janet stopped by. But the Mercury on Mercury was much too high, so Janet split for Venus. But on Venus, she found she couldn't see a thing for all the clouds around. Earth looked exciting, kind of green and inviting. So Janet thought she'd give it a go. But the creatures on that planet look so very strange to Janet, she didn't even dare to say hello. It's a bird, Ooh it's a plane, Ooh why it must be a UFO, but it was. Interplanet Janet, she's a galaxy girl. A solar system is from a future world. She travels like a rocket with her comet team. And there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. No, there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. Is red and Jupiter is big, and Saturn shows off its rings. Uranus is built on a funny tilt, and Neptune is its twin. And Pluto, little Pluto, is the farthest planet from our sun. They say our solar system is not alone in space, the universe has endless mystery. Planet Janet, she's a galaxy girl. A solar system is from a future world. She travels like a rocket with her common team. And there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. No, there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. Well, Tina, we've been here long enough. You got a big day ahead of you. We gotta go. But wait, you can't go yet. There are so many songs you haven't done yet. Like, electricity, electricity, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, hey, 30, 30, 30. Tina, that really is the end. We've gotta get back to where we came from, just like Janet here. Right, Janet? Right. You're going to make a great teacher, Tina. Good luck. Good luck, little lady. <laughs> well, Tina, we've had some fun, but it's time for us to leave. And remember, you learn something, e learn something new every day. Look out for it. Bye, Bye Tina. Tina. Bye, Tina. Bye. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, I want to thank you for all your help this morning. I'm definitely ready to teach. 
We knew I, you could do nice. it. Yeah. yeah. But there's still a little bit more time before I have to be at school. Don't you think we could just do one more song? Uh, that way I, I know I'm ready. Sure. Oh, yeah. Not. Yep. Which one do you want to do? Hey, my personal favorite. Interjections! <laughs> When Reginald was home with the flu, ah, uh, ah, uh, the doctor knew just what to do. She cured the infection with one small injection, and Reginald hollered some interjections. Interjections, show excitement, emotion. They're generally set from a sentence by an exclamation point or by common the feelings not as strong. Though Geraldine played hard to get, ah, uh, ah, uh, Geraldo knew he woo her. Yet she showed his affection despite her objection, and Geraldine hollered some interjections. Interjections, show excitement, or motion, and, and from a sentence, find exclamation point, or by come the feelings not as strong. So when you're happy, hooray! Or sad, aw! Or frightened, eek! Or mad, rest! Or excited, wow! Or glad, hey! An interjection starts a sentence right! Seven all, uh, uh, when Franklin found he had the ball, he made a connection in the other direction. The crowd started shouting now, interjections. Interjections, show excitement, or emotion. They're generally set up from a sentence by an exclamation point, or by come when the feeling's not as strong. So when you're happy, hooray! Or sad, aw! Or frightened, eek! Or mad, rats! Or excited, wow! Or glad, hey! And interjection starts the sentence right! Interjections, show excitement, or emotion. They're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point or by come when the feeling's not as strong. Interjections, show excitement, or emotion. Interjections, 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 yeah! Darn, that's the end.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming out and supporting the St. Vincent's Drama Club. Um, hi. <laughs> um, in a moment, our cast will be making their way around the outsides of the parish hall, so you can go and give them hugs and kisses and tell them what a wonderful job they did. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting us. But before everyone goes, I would like to say a few words. Um, Mrs. Dumper, we, on behalf of the me and the whole entire drama club, we would like to thank you for pouring your entire heart and soul into this production. And especially for me, myself, for this being my last year, you have made this year spectacular, and I could have not made it any better. And also for Mrs. Crandall, I mean, she's put everything into this. She's has really much been here every single time with making sure that our dinosaur computer actually works. <laughs> and then also with my dad, he's been, Mr. Dumford, he's been working on the sound and all the sound effects and every technical thing there is. So on behalf of all of us, thank you. Okay, cast. 